Second City was this little group of snobs in Chicago. Most of them had come out of the University of Chicago. They were beyond smart. And they just did improvisation almost to top each other. I, I went into a company that we were doing a scene on owning a lekathoi, which is a Greek vase. Now, if you didn't know what a lekathoi was, you were in the audience. <laughs> it took you four minutes to know what we were talking about now, didn't it? So they were so brilliant and so smart. And the comedy was up here and they never pandered down, ever. And it became such a breeding ground for the most brilliant Mike Nichols, Elaine May, Alan Arkin, Shelley Berman. Then the second group came, and that was Barbara Harris, and then I came out of that, and David Steinberg came out of that. Then the third group was the John Belushi group, and the little Gilda Ratners, and it was all smart asses. We were all a bunch of smart asses. In Second City, you were able to say what you thought was funny. You never had to say, will the audience get it? You didn't care. You went to each other's level. And the, the things that came out of it were absolutely glowing. Second City was the beginning of improv. And what we did every night, remember we were all young, smart, and thought we were smarter than we were. So you'd say to the audience, give us a first line, give us a last line, give us two characters, and give us the way you want us to do it. Tennessee Williams, Shakespeare, you tell us how we should do it, the art form. And then we would improvise scenes. And the scenes were wonderful. That's what was so amazing. We got one review with the uh, critic in Chicago said they couldn't have improvised that. I mean, everybody was so bright. And you were also, they opened the doors for everybody because you didn't have to worry about anything. You could say what you thought was funny and you had a friend to bounce it back at. It was an amazing time. I was very lucky because I was the only woman at that time coming up and we'd all sit at a place called the Bitter End. There'd be George Carlin and Woody Allen and, and, and Bill Cosby and me. And there was a whole new wave, but we didn't know we were a new wave. We didn't realize we were all the first generation of American born comedians. We weren't mockies. We weren't, you know, we, we were born and we were educated. And we all had our own voices and our own things to say. And none of us wanted to be Bob Hope. None of us wanted to say, uh, my mother-in-law, because we didn't have a mother-in-law. And so we all spoke so differently and had such totally different personas that we could sit and watch each other and never think for a second that I could use your line or you could lose my, use mine. There was no stealing because I couldn't do Woody and Woody couldn't do me. It was an amazing time, and we all rushed to the surface within a period of five years. We were the ones that said, I want to talk about my life. I'm educated, I'm smart, I'm attractive. What's wrong? And that's what I was talking about.